help yourself to a drink. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Junie. <laughs> Way. <Well. laughs> oh, come in, love. It's all right, friend of my daughter's. <laughs> Babes, it's for you. She's got that bloody radio on again. She'll wait, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? What am I doing? What are you doing here? Well, this is where Debbie lives, isn't it? That bird from the pu... Here. Here, you're not trying... No, to... I am not. Give me that. I'm a friend of her mum's. Yeah? Mm. When did you make her, then? It's 1964. <laughs> well, you've only just come out of sound. <laughs> No, I was engaged to her, soppy. What, another one? <laughs> Stone me, though. You've been engaged more times than a switchboard, haven't you? <laughs> don't you start getting lippy. <laughs> I don't know what you brought that round for, cos I ain't got a record player. It's all right, I ain't got a record. <laughs> <laughs> you are a saucy little dick, you mean? Oi, I got one of those at home on a sideboard. Yeah, all right, well, I'll get you another one tomorrow. Yeah, you better you better... Oh, Junie. June. Huh. You'll never guess who that is. That is little Rodney. You're kidding. No, I'm not straight up. I don't believe it. The last time I saw you, you were about that eye. How old was he, Del? Mm, then, about two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's very nice to meet you again, Rodney. And you, Mum. <laughs> Leave it out, Rodney. You're making me feel quite Tom and Dick. You really are. You can call me June. Oh, thank you. Debbie won't be a minute. She's just putting some clothes on. Oh, she needn't bother. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I meant, you know, she needn't bother to put on anything special. Um, I was thinking, actually, um, if you two wanted to go out, and, uh, you know, <laughs> chat about old times and all that. Well, you know, I'm sure me and Debbie wouldn't mind babysitting. Uh, what do you think, Del? I dare tell you what I think, Junie. <laughs> Come on, let's go out for a drink, shall we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, Rodney. Debs. You all right, darling? Oh, what's ya? Uh, you too, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, I came in the paper shop this morning for a dirty magazine. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, listen... Uh, I was know, just saying that uh, you and me wouldn't mind babysitting if Del and your mum went out for a drink. Yeah, that suits me. I'll get my coat. Yeah, all right, darling. Hmm. Yeah. Boy, I'd do that up if I was you. You'd get a cold on your chest. Oi, Debbie's there. She can do what she likes. <laughs> <laughs> you want a brandy, Debs? Splashing out, isn't you? Yeah, well, of course, he's celebrating, isn't he? Celebrating what? Well, hasn't he told you? He's just heard from the clinic he's got an all clear. <laughs> <laughs> Put her down, Rodney! You're back early, aren't you? Yes. Ain't we just, Dave? I ain't going to bed, Del. Yeah, no, listen, Junie, we've got to talk. Look, I knew this is how you behave. That's why I didn't tell you. I'll see you around sometime. No, listen, June. Maybe. Look, we've got to talk. <laughs> You've made another lasting impression then, or something? <laughs> Rodney, come on, get up out of there. Come on, give Debbie some air. The poor girl can't breathe. Yeah, all right. You want another brandy, Deb? No, she don't. I'll make my own decisions, thank you. Yes, of course. Of course, it's just that if you have too much to drink, you might make yourself sick. And you don't want to be ill for your party next week. It's Debbie's birthday next week, Rodney. Yeah? Thought it was mine tonight. <laughs> I'll get you a nice present, shall I? 
dear? I'll get you a solid gold watch, eh? A couple of hundred quid at least, no rubbish. All right. What's your game, Del? <laughs> just, just feeling generous, that's all. Come on, Rodney, I'll give you a lift home, come on. Give me a... Del, we only live 50 yards across the precinct. I know that, I know, but when I came back tonight, there was a load of muggers hanging about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, perhaps I'd better go, Deb's got to be up early. All right, then. <coughs> Good night. Well, Good night. <laughs> Pleasant dreams. <laughs> well, night, Debs. Good night. Come on, Rodney! <laughs> Just what is your game, Bill? All that, shall I buy you a nice gold watch, shall I, dear? And sweet dreams? I was just being friendly, that's all. You're trying to pull her, aren't you? I am not trying to pull her. <laughs> what do you think I am, some kind of sicko or something? Well, you're trying to interfere between me and Debbie, aren't you? I am not trying to interfere, Rodney. Now, listen, Rodney, look. I just, I don't think that you two are right for each other. It's got nothing to do with you. Me and Debbie think we're right for each other. Matter of fact, we're thinking of getting engaged. You're what? <laughs> you can't get engaged to her, Rodney. Now, what, what, I, what I mean is, what I mean is, you're too young. I'm 24, Del. Yeah. By the time you was my age, you'd been engaged to every bird this side of the water. <laughs> no, you're just jealous, aren't you? You can't stand the thought that I might end up with a nice little wife. You're going to end up with a nice little stretch if you ain't careful. <laughs> Rodney, you mustn't get engaged to her. You give me one good reason why I mustn't. Because she's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Debbie is your daughter. Yeah. No, it's not real. No, it's not happening to me. I'll tell you what, I'm in the middle of a bad trip and I'm going to wake up in a minute. <laughs> I've worked it out on the calculator, Rodney. <laughs> me and Junie broke up 19 and a half years ago. It's Debbie's 19th birthday next week. You're the one with the GCE in maths. You work it out yourself. Well, no, she probably met someone after you. No, she was born a couple of months after. Well, then she was premature. Premature? She'd have to have been bloody instant, brother. <laughs> right, Trick? Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, well... Uh, yeah, it's all right. I know, Trick. I know, mate. You going, uh, going back to the flat, are you? Yeah, I'm coming back. Yeah. Do us a favour, will you? Go and open up. You know, I've got one or two things to do. Bung the vicar a couple of quid, that sort of thing. Um, see that, that three over there? They're the uh, North London branch of the family. You know, make them welcome, will you? Keep your eye on them, eh? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Cheers, Trick. I love a nice funeral. Enjoying about it's two more after this.
Sorry. Leave the car, shall we? Eh? Have a nice little walk, eh? Yeah. Can't listen to a nice walk, eh? Come on. Oi. Gently. <laughs> Well, Michael, how's business in the pub? Oh, not bad, Boise, not bad. Oh, you didn't hear, did you? Thursday night, some burke nicked me cigarette machine. Never. Yeah. What about that sonic burglar alarm, Delboy soldier? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they nicked that and all. <laughs> Just make some excuse, Dad. Say we're in a hurry or something. But it's a funeral, love. We've got to get all the way back to North London. If we don't leave now, we'll cop the rush hour. Look, I don't want to go back to their flat either, Jean. But I'm family. No, I want to go back there. He was my brother. It's got nothing to do with you, Uncle Albert, so stay out of it. What do you mean he was your brother? You and him didn't talk to each other for years. Me and your Aunt Ada didn't talk to each other for years. But she was still my wife. <laughs> Come on, we'll go back for half hour. Show our respect. Anyway, we'd only have him whining all the way home. And don't you dare light that pipe in my car. <laughs> it was a lovely service, Vicar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Has uh, anyone seen my hat? It was. Yeah. <laughs> Safely. Yeah, I got him home safely, all right, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, son. You're back. Boomerang Trotter always comes back. What happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. I drove him all the way back to North London, right through the bleeding rush hour. And what did we find when we got there? Stan and Jean have moved. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean, move? What, what do you mean, what do I mean? They hooked a caravan on the back of the Cortina and they've had it away. <laughs> this was lying where the caravan once stood. It's just me, clothes and a few personal belongings. Oh, yeah. You mean that's all you've got in the world? No, no, we've got to go back tomorrow to pick up his parrot. <laughs> How could they do this to me, eh? That is disgusting, isn't it? I mean, deserting him like that. Yeah, it ain't the first time it's happened either. I mean, I think there should be a law or something against that. Yeah, I know. All I want to know is where they've got... Yeah, what did you say, just said? I said it ain't the first time it's happened either. Do you remember your cousin Audrey? I went and stayed with her and her husband Kevin for a year. One day, he sent me down to Sainsbury with a shopping list. When I come back, they'd emigrated. <laughs> <laughs> Not a jiggly bird to me, though. <clears throat> then there was young Julian. You know, Patsy's girl. I went over there to give her a bit of comfort because her husband was on nights. Six months later, she sets fire to the house. <laughs> she got three months medical supervision for that. I can remember thinking as I stood on the ledge and jumped into the fireman's net, that's gratitude for me. <laughs> <coughs> oh, and I've got a funny feeling, Dale. <laughs> so have I, Rodney. I feel like a turkey who's just caught Bernard Matthews grinning at him. <laughs> what should I do with these, then? I'll tell you what you ought to do with those, shall I? You put them in here, right? In they go, they go in there, cos you're not staying here, all right? No, of course not. Just for a couple of days, that's all. No, 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 not for a couple of days, not for one day. 
There's a seaman's mission down there in St Catherine's Dock. You go down there. Go on. Well, I, I thought I'd just have a look at a local paper and find myself some digs. Yeah, that's a good idea, Uncle. They'll have a local paper down at the mission. Now, go on, fling your up. Yeah, all right, Del. You don't mind if I have a quick cup of tea, do you? No, go on. There's a flask of cold tea out there and some volivants from yesterday. Go on, you have <laughs> Cheers, son. Oi. Hmm? What are you doing? Winding him up? Yeah, yeah. I'm winding him up. I'm winding him up. Hell, he only wants to stay for a couple of nights and get himself sorted out. He's a trotter, Rodney. We're trotters! Yes, I know, but we take after mum in nature. He's from dad's side of the family. You know what they're like. You offer them a cup of tea and they think you've adopted them. Look at that time when dad came round here. He wanted to stay one night. Took us nine a fortnight to get rid of him. <laughs> Uncle Albert might not be like that. Oh, leave it out, Rodney. You've heard him yourself when he was telling us about that time he came round the Cape of Good Hope. He was three months on the same wave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you, Del. I do not believe that you, of all people, could... Where do you think you're going? I'm going down a calf. I'm going to get some grub and some better company. <laughs> I'm going to put some clothes on. <laughs> it's all your fault, Rodney. And I don't start all that again. Well, it is. I mean, ever since you were like that, oh, you've done nothing but hold me back. I held you back? Yeah. I mean, when Mum died, I should have had you put in care. I would have been someone by now. I would have done. I would have probably had my own penthouse and I'd have had Aston Martin with a telephone and all that. Well, I'll tell you something, Del. You'd have been doing me a favour if you'd had me put into care. Cos at least then I might have got a proper job when I left school instead of humping your old suitcase all over London. But you didn't want to leave school, did you? If it had been up to you, you would have been there drawing your old age pension, wouldn't you? <laughs> I only wanted to stay there while I got my GCE in maths and art. And a lot of good they've done, the firm. The only time your GCE has come in handy was that time I asked you to count them tins of paint. <laughs> Bloody hell's that? Oi. Hmm? Don't think it was that deep fryer, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stay to find out. Come on, let's look lively. Come on. Dale! Yeah, we just won't be a minute, yeah, love. Just just it's your Uncle Albert! What about Uncle Albert? He's fallen down our cellar, quick! Fallen down what? the cellar? What? I had a fish stick Well? No. No. No, Dale. The old neck's gone. No, no, no. I mean, what happened? Oh, I don't know. I just looked up and there was Uncle Albert plummeting towards me. Me? Oh, John, where is he? Oh, he's over there somewhere. Oh, it... How the hell did he get over there? He hit the flank and bounced. <laughs> <laughs> he went through the airlock, one of them springboard divers. <laughs> My neck down off hurt, Del. Your oh. neck? Your neck? Uncle Albert nearly ends up in a jumbo's flight path and all you can think about is your rotten Gregory. Oh, <laughs> come on. You all right? Oh, I'm a bit shaken and dazed, Rodney. Yeah, probably jet lag. Yeah. <laughs> come on, get him onto his feet, Rodney. Come on, up your calm. Fancy leaving an open yeah. cellar door unguarded. Oh, good mind to sue the brewery. Yeah, put your arm around Rodney. Sue the brewery? Put him down. What the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> yeah, you pick him up. I know what I just said, it? but you don't know what sort of damage he's done. He might have broken something. Yeah, he has. About four dozen bowls of guineas. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with him. He said so himself. Yeah, but how does he know that? How does he know that? He might have hit his head and got percussion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, the first thing to do in first aid is never move the victim, right? You'll have to move me soon, Del. The last bell's just gone. Can you see that? He's got ringing sounds in his ears. <laughs> this is even worse than I thought, Rodney. Quick, nip upstairs and get on a telephone. Right. Yeah, phone for a solicitor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A solicitor? Yeah. Dill, you can't sue. <laughs> you don't want to put money on it, do you, eh? Him falling down that hole could be the biggest bit of luck we've had in years. But, Dill, if he'd hurt himself, there'd be little signs, wouldn't there? Like blood and pain. His hat ain't come off. <laughs> How's that, all right? <laughs> don't give us all that Quincy cobblers, Rodney. You don't know how bad I am. You see, you don't know how bad he is. Now, quick, whip upstairs and phone Solly Atwell. You'll find his number in the uh, yellow pages. Go on, look lively. Solly Atwell's our solicitor. Yeah. 
Bloody hell, he's more bent than a villain's. <laughs> just the sort of man we need in a case like this, a specialist. Go on, get on the blower. All right, you don't mind if I phone for an ambulance first, though, yeah? Ambulance. Ambulance, good thinking. That looked great on the report. Well done, Rodney. <laughs> Come on, away you go. <laughs> Del Brewery gonna pay through the nose for this. I told you something had turned up, didn't I, Del? That's all right, Uncle. You just conserved your oxygen, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Albert, did I hear you groaning in pain? No. Well, why not? Come on. <laughs> what is it now? Oh, well, I'm very surprised. I came down here expecting you bunch of wallies to sound like, like a cat being doctored without anaesthetic. <laughs> what? You're very good. All right, you're not quite up to the standard of Spanner Ballet or Durham Durham. <laughs> there is something about your music that I like. like it's, well, it's got something. I only hope it ain't catching. <laughs> if this is all some build-up, some very funny joke, would you just tell us all now and stop wasting everybody's time? It's not a joke, Rodney. No, not a joke. I mean it. I'm very impressed. Very. Bravo. Bravo. Of course, you do realise that you're all going to flop like a jelly on a wet mattress, don't you? Oh, yeah. Why are we going to flop? Because you're undisciplined. You ain't going to go nowhere until you get your act together. Yeah? Well, my mate's cousin works for a rebel company and he reckons he can get us a contract. Oh, yeah? And my mate's a doorman down at Chelsea. But he can't get me a bloody game, can he? <laughs> now you're still rough around the edges. I mean, why don't you take a butcher's at yourselves? You look like something a cat has dragged in. And then dragged out again. <laughs> Trotsky, shut it. We like looking like this. We're Marxist, Trotskyite anarchists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you want to be superstars then? Because we want to be rich, Marxist, Trotsky, or anarchists. <laughs> not, not too rich. No. Just a little bit rich. Money ain't everything. No, but it certainly takes the sting out of being poor, though, doesn't it? <laughs> now, it strikes me that what you need, you need um, someone to steer you in the right direction, you know, look after your interests. Well, what you need is a manager. Now, hold on, hold on. Don't look at me. No, no, because the bloke who comes your manager, he's got to buy you all new equipment, hasn't he? And you've got to get new drums, new guitars, and a new set of speakers. Oh, oh. No, that's going to cost an arm and a leg. I thought you said we was good. You are good. You're all natural. You've got raw talent. Hey! Drop out! Don't want to put your money where your mouth is, though, do you? Do you think I'm the kind that won't back my instinct? You know me, Rodney. He who dares wins. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, uh, Mickey, the funds are a bit tight at the moment. You're an alpha wooly, Trotter. Uh, oh, yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're ready. All we thought, Dale. All right. All right, you win. I will be your manager. I'll get you bookings. You just see if I don't. What about instruments, though? I'll get that as well. Oh, don't listen to him. We'll probably end up with a chuck away from some boy scouts band. <laughs> no, you won't. All your instruments and equipment will be brand new. You write down what you want and I'll get it for you. Because I'm going to make an investment in you, lads. This time next year, we're going to be millionaires. I can see it now. The Albert Hall, Carnegie Hall, the Hollywood Bowl, the revolutionary new sound of pop protest. You don't know any of the bachelor's numbers, do you? <laughs> no, all right, well, no, it doesn't matter. No, not important. Well, you carry on rehearsing, because I'm going to put this show on the road.